So my real advice for that is if you're going to do uh, steel, I would go ahead and get my pipe. Happen to have a piece right here. Interesting. <laughs> Welcome to Smoky CNC Woodworks. I'm Brian, and today, well, we're gonna have to do another little QA. I was out here working in the shop, working on some other projects, uh, stuff that was non related to CNC, and see that nice darkness? That just blew through here. I'm not sure how many inches of rain that that just dumped on us, but there was hail in it, and I was just waiting for electricity to go out. We got lucky this go around. Unfortunately, there's another one coming. I'm sure all this is related to Hurricane Laura. And <laughs> because of the way this storm came through, it circled and it's circling back around. We maybe get the same one twice, I don't know. So today, what I'm going to do is try to answer some questions that have been lingering. And I have straightforward answers for them. It's probably just not answers that people want to hear. So let's go. So from time to time, I get asked the question, uh, what kind of machine am I working on? And I always kind of get a chuckle out of it because I always either tell them a McGill one or a Smoky one, and they're confused. And I just say, look, this is a DIY, DIY machine. I uh, built it about a year and a half, two years ago, and I've just ran with it from there. So another question that gets asked a lot is, uh, what machine do I recommend for people to start out on? Sadly, this is going to be one of those questions I don't have the answer you want to hear. I, I don't know. Uh, I've never used any machine but my own. I hear a lot about Shapeco, uh, but beyond that, I don't have any idea how it's constructed. I don't know the strength of the frame. I know nothing. I mean, as you see on mine, I went with solid steel frame, and I'm going to get into that right now. As you guys already know, this is a solid steel frame that I welded. And the question I get asked is the frame, is there a benefit to the frame? Well, other than strength, no. So do I recommend you building out of steel? Not if you're going to weld it. The reason I say that, you've got to deal with heating and contraction a lot. So that means you've got to go through here and just hit dots. So your metal doesn't expand too much or it doesn't contract up too much as it cools or else you'll get everything completely out of square. Now, I'm not going to tell you this is 100% on, but it is very close. But I spent days sitting there putting little dots. The welds on it that I over overlaid are ugly. It's not like I'm a professional welder, but they're very strong. It'll hold and definitely take any kind of punishment I can give it out here. So my advice for that, if you're going to use steel, I would not do a hard weld like I did. I would put ears on the steel, get a piece of your tubing, and weld you some ears up. Just put them up there like that. That way, whenever you come into the next one, you can bolt the machine together. Simply because it's going to be easier to line up your bolt holes and get them where your, everything's square than it is going to be to fight the heating and contraction of the weld that you're trying to lay down. The other one I get mentioned a lot is extruded aluminum frame. I think it'd be a great idea. If you can get sections of extruded aluminum and bolt that thing up, I think it'll be very strong. I unfortunately don't have any pieces of extruded aluminum laying around to show you what I'm talking about, but it's that aluminum that has all those little weird waves. And each one of those little arcs actually adds strength to the structure. So I absolutely think that would work. The only problem I can see you having with an extruded aluminum frame is the weight. I think it would be a little light. You're gonna to have to secure it down somehow. So whenever this machine gets to jerking real fast, making some kind of design, it won't move the machine around. I mean, I know aluminum is very strong. That right there is plate aluminum. That's what my plates are on the top of my rails that my gantry rides on. That's what this is, is aluminum plate. So, I mean, you can make many pieces out of, many things out of an aluminum plate fairly cheap. And it's very easy to work with, a lot more forgiving than steel. So the next question I get is asked about my clamping system and if I'm happy with it. I am fairly happy with it. I use T-Track, 
which is just track that looks like that. It's made of aluminum. And that little thing right there on one of the clamps just slides into it and goes underneath the lips. And whenever I tighten it down, it pulls against it and it holds it good and tight. I've been told, you know, I mean, there's several different ways to clamp these things down. There are compression clamps where you come in from the sides, tighten them down, and it just pushes against it, holds it. I'd be a little leery of that just because I'm afraid what if that pops up. And there's also other many ways to do this with wood clamps. They are made of wood and they get in there and they wedge it in there. They're really neat too. They do the same thing. They put a downward pressure on it. I, this is the way I just started. And so this, I'm happy with this system and it was really pretty cheap. I ordered all of it off of Amazon. I think there's links below my videos on it, but if you're just looking at it, just get on Amazon and look at it. I mean, and like I said, there may be links down below and check it out because this has worked well to this point, except for, you know, early on when I hit a clamp with the spindle. Ouch. Okay. And I'm unhappy with this viewer. I don't even remember who it was that asked this, but they wanted to look at the underside of my table. So any weird grunting or grunting noises, I don't want to hear you laughing. So you'll see right down here, there's the back of the table all the way up to the front of the table. You'll see that I've added a... Uh, well, I can't get my finger. You'll see that I've added runners across, and there's actually only two right out there in the middle, and then we have both ends. The ends are 48 inches apart from one edge to the other. These are spaced out where the front one is 18 inches. The first uh, cross member is 18 inches from the front cross brace. The next one's 16 inches from this one, and then we're 18 inches from the end. Again, what scientific method did I come up with to do that? None. I just knew it needed support. And by putting those cross members in, I, I knew it was going to be more than strong enough because that's 10 gauge steel that I'm using there and way overkill. It's just what I had left over from my RV and boat storage. Okay, so while I was under there, you saw my electronics box, which is that big wooden box. I've had a couple of people mention it and I wouldn't recommend making a wooden box to put your electronic equipment in. It is kind of a fire hazard because all those little pieces pieces of equipment, the drivers and the little breakout board, all that stuff in there can get pretty hot. Now I actually have one, one fan blowing cool air in, one blowing the hot air out, exhausting it and keeping it current, constantly circulated while the machine's running. I've never had any problems with any kind of overheating. Uh, not going to say it won't, but to this point it's worked well for me. Uh, I would agree with the people that were arguing, that were not really arguing with me, the people that were saying that I should be using a metal box, some kind of either aluminum or steel box to put the equipment in. I'll agree with that. I just didn't have it here. And this is what I had and could get easily, so I built it out of wood. Now my com computer cabinet is the same way. It's a wooden cabinet. Uh, again, it's got cool air in co uh, coming in and it's got an exhaust fan going out. Not real concerned about that because, you know, computers really don't get that hot. They could melt down, just not as big of a fire danger. So unfortunately, I really don't have good information about other machines. Uh, I mean, as I pointed out, I've never really messed with it. I gotta be honest, I don't personally know anybody else that has a CNC router. The people that I do know have it are all over the world. And since I've went onto YouTube, they've got hold of me. You remember I made a sign for Ricker Woodworks. That was basically just to get his name out there and get people kind of driven to him. The guy's out of Ohio and he does some good stuff. He actually does it for a business. He does take little commissions and take stuff on. Another one that's taking commissions right now is Black Mania out of England. This guy has just taken a pretty good commission from a pretty prominent guy. So those are the people I talk to and the people that are around the world that are building machines currently that I answer questions for a lot. Have no problem, I'm glad they're building them one. They're a lot of fun to play with. So to give you an idea of what I've been working on today, this is a piece of steel, just 16th inch plate, and you can see the wooden frame that I've got, it's gluing up around it. The steel still isn't fastened down, I can still pull it out. But what that is, is to fit beside a wall, beside a uh, refrigerator, so people can put magnets up and notes and whatnot. The other one I'm working on is a cabinet door for my church. They have a big piano hinge. This door folds down 
and the piano hinge ended up splitting the wood it was on and just falling off. And so I'm fixing to reconstruct a piece of wood that'll go underneath so it can connect. So my next two projects on the CNC, uh, one of them's really kind of unique. Uh, it's different, that's all I'm gonna say. Uh, I got the code from elsewhere and thought I'd just give it a whirl and see how it works out. The other one is gonna be school related and it's pretty exciting because you know, in Oklahoma, the whole pandemic thing, it's a big deal, but I'm gonna give you an example. The county I live in, we had our first confirmed death from it yesterday or the day before. Overall, we have four active cases in the county, four. Now granted, most people are still masking up whenever they go to stores or get into big gatherings, but I mean, that's pretty amazing considering how many people around the state have it and around the United States have it because we're a tourist spot. We've got lakes, natural waterfalls, and that national park. So we're just fortunate right now. Hopefully they're gonna to get to start sports soon around here and we can watch some football. So if you guys have any questions about the CNC machine that I can reasonably answer, <laughs> because when you start asking me about tons of the settings, a lot of the settings I just tweak just a little bit here and there and I never know exactly where they're at every time because I do mess with that little stuff. So from project to project, I probably can't just sit there off the top of my head and tell you how everything is set. But if you have questions about the construction of the machine, and I know the first thing people is going to do is go to my electronics box. I'm going to have to get a lot of questions about it before I actually crawl under there and open that thing up because that thing, you know, let's be honest, I don't bend like I used to. Crawl under there and getting that camera up and I'm not unwiring it and pulling it out and showing it because I don't want to go back through wiring it again. <laughs> I'd honestly planned on doing a CNC cut today. It wasn't going to be anything just spectacular, but it's a order that I've got to get done and it'll be pretty neat when it gets through. But then we started hearing thunder, little lightning, and then a downpour and it started hailing. I don't know, it's supposed to do it again. It looks starting to look dark again out the windows. So I'm sure we're gonna have another one tonight and I don't fire up the machine during any of that kind of weather just because I don't wanna get anything shorted out. Before long, I am gonna fire off and start doing a lot of Christmas projects. I know it's early, but my wife has, you know, a pile of them like that for me to do. And so I'm going to go ahead and start getting some of them made. Some of the stuff is going to be good for trade shows, craft shows and whatnot. And some of them are pretty different. I've got a couple of them drawn up already. One of them I've designed myself and I think it'll be pretty neat. And these are going to be things that aren't out of the realm of possibility if you've got a machine at home for you to copy it and make something very similar. And a couple of them you could do with a jigsaw. I just get to cheat and use the CNC. And I'm sure there'll be some Halloween and Thanksgiving stuff thrown in there too because my wife likes to decorate around the house. She's got a little spot in a store in town that she now puts stuff in a booth. So I'm sure I'll be helping to decorate that just as a honeydew, I'm sure. You know how that goes. So guys, that's gonna be it today. Sorry I didn't have anything real exciting, but weather wins here. <laughs> I'm not going to fight it. If you guys hadn't done it, run over and check me out at Smoky Uncuffed. I've uh, got a website for it. I've got a YouTube channel of the same name, and you can find it on just about any podcast. So guys, if you haven't done so yet, please subscribe here, and I'll see you all next time.